first few seconds. Good afternoon, Possibility War fans. It is the 25th of September, 2023, and I am your host, Paul. Um, I am about to give you uh, three hours worth of video chopped up into regular segments like I, I try to do, about an hour each, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, these are the first three hours of the Possibility Chalice Adventure, and they are designed to... Uh, uh, help you get into the game and everything like that. But in this particular instance, I need certain folks to see certain things so that they understand the process that it goes through to be able to produce these videos. It's not just shooting the videos, cutting them up, and then putting them up on YouTube. There's a whole lot that goes into it. There's music, there's timing, there's cutting out. All of the chewing and the sloshing and the dead air... Oh, I hate cutting out dead air because there's tons of it um, and all kinds of stuff that goes with it. So uh, without further ado, let's get you into the video. And if you recognize that the quality is down, then the quality is down. Here we go. Good evening, Possibility War fans. Uh, we are starting a new adventure tonight. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's just kind of head over there. Relics of Power 2, the Possibility Chalice. And of course, we'll be beginning with Scene 1, Oil Seeker. Uh, any of you who are from the old school of... Um, of, of uh, Torg role-playing the Possibility Wars will recognize uh, part two of the campaign adventure. And uh, you will find out that uh, it's going to be, um, uh, you know, something else. It's, it's really going to be a lot of fun, I think. Um, let me change my volume mixer so that I am muting Discord for the time being. All right. Um, anyway, uh, we will be finishing up some stuff with the previous adventure, Journey to the Dark Heart, which of course, uh, for probably the fifth time you've heard this, was actually Act 4 of the Destiny map, but it really didn't fit there. Um, so we completed that last, uh, two weeks ago, sorry, and we... Uh, are going to be starting uh, the Possibility Chalice Relics of Power Part 2 tonight. But we've got to take care of closing out the, the former adventure, and we've got to take care of uh, character advancement and stuff like that. Yes, all of that is going to make it into the recording, uh, including the opening of uh, the Possibility Chalice uh, itself through a prologue. Um, there's actually three stories in there that I will be reading. Um, uh, I will try and put in the description, for those of you who aren't interested in, in you know, lit watching all of the character advancement stuff, I will be putting into the description on YouTube the uh, time when the new adventure actually goes to pick up. For now, however, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and put this on pause and wait until all my friends come in and uh, and then we we will we'll, I think we're going to have a good night. So welcome. Okay, and we're back. Let's go to the game recording unlike I do sometimes. I just leave it in the in the screensaver or not screensaver, the uh, slideshow. Uh, and then let's go over to, let's see, yep, let's go over to there. Uh-oh, the radar's going. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, uh, July 16th, we're going to do a little things a little bit differently because this is our first real campaign. Uh, this is going to be part two of that campaign. So I want you guys to kind of recount what you can remember from um, uh, the Destiny map and Journey to the Dark Heart. Now, uh, for Gordon and Justin, I know you two were not here for the destiny map but you were for journey to the dark heart uh, which was of course uh, act four in the first adventure um remington uh you can it, it, it's i'm not going to say you can't speak through Tomislav for artorius but since artorius was there you can also say things that you remember fair enough fair enough Okay, now we're we're going to end the la the final scene, the final act, and the final and and the end of the adventure shortly. So if you're seeing, you know, all of your cards and stuff and everything like that, uh, don't worry about it. We're going to get it all squared away here in in a few minutes. So I'm going to start with the leader of the group, Peaches. Yes. What do you remember from the Destiny map and Journey to the Dark Heart? Well, um, from the very beginning, uh, we found clues that the uh, Gaunt Man and uh, Mobius and others, High Lord, were wanting something. We didn't know what. Uh, so we investigated and we found that it was pieces of... Uh, plate or metal these etchings that showed some strange symbols on them uh we beat the other i guess uh cosms uh emissaries to these same pieces of stone and sl or slate and uh made them uh brought them back to where they were from and it turns out they were parts parts of a map um we we solved the puzzle of the map. We noted the location. We smashed the map, and then we um, booked it out of the temple. Okay. Any, anything to add for in betweens? Anything that y'all did any you know special in the destiny map or in oh, yeah. journey? Uh, there were there were glories. Uh, and oh gosh, I can't remember half the glories that we did. There was a glory just recently of the uh, crossing a bridge, right? Well, yes. I did, yeah. Yes. But, yes, bravo. But let me show you all something, okay? And I'm probably going to use Rios since she's not here tonight. Um, do you all see your individual uh, tokens on the screen there? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and double click on those. And hey, then, my, my, my sheet came up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and then you can you could kind of move that character sheet like, you know, out of the way somewhere because you're going to be opening up something else here in a minute. Uh, on the very right hand side of that character sheet, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six tabs, starting with stats and then perks, gear, powers, effects and notes. Please click on notes. And then once your notes come up you'll see at the very top it says storm night journal and then you're there's a link uh for your character's name go ahead and click on that link all right and then uh is there anybody that's not there yet no is that a no you're not there or no you are there no i am not there okay my browser slash internet connection is having some difficulty. I had to manually bring up the URL earlier. Oh. It would it gave me the whole can't find that server message. Oh. Uh, okay, well it shows you as being logged in. I'm able to I'm online right now. Now it finally came up. It's just like like the old-fashioned days with the uh, 24 baud modem. It, oh, yeah. It's been that slow. <laughs> oh, wow. Do you need to reboot your computer or anything real quick? No, I don't think so. Because okay. it's working on the other browser. I think it's a browser issue. Okay. 
Uh, uh, which browser are you using? Right now, I'm using my uh, Firefox. Okay, uh, you might think, and, and I know you probably hate the browser, but it works really well. You might think about going over to Chrome. Because Chrome... Not on a dare. Huh? I said, not even on a dare. <laughs> well, and that is how I feel about Firefox. Just goes to show everybody's got their preferences. I love them both. I, I use them both. Um, it's just that uh, Firefox has a habit of leaving some really wide um, uh, sliders all over your sheet, and it kind of distorts things. So, uh, actually, Foundry was was more or less programmed for use specifically in um, in Chrome. However, um, yeah, those guys, uh, Foundry, the Forge. The Forge has a special browser set aside where they've stripped out everything that you don't need in order to be able to run it. If you want, we can get to that in, in a short little bit. All right. After the character sheet comes up, where do I go? I didn't catch that part. I'm sorry. Okay. So you've got the character sheet up. Okay. Along the right-hand side, you're going to see six tabs. Okay. Six, six vertical tabs. Um, the bottom one says notes. Go ahead and click on notes, please. And, okay. and then once that is open, you'll see Storm Knight Journal at the top. And I try and keep those at the top so that you guys can, can access them right away. And you should see uh, uh, Katsumi's name there uh, with a link. Go ahead and click on that link. Okay, already done. Okay, and it will open a window for you. Now, on the left-hand side, uh, where you've got your, your table of contents, you should see Glory. Go ahead and click on Glory, and it will take you to the glories that your character has been a part of. Um, uh, oh, oh boy, I didn't update those glories. I was about to say, it doesn't look current. Yeah. I, You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to write it up. If I would have written it up while we were in play, while it was happening, it, it would have been done. Anyway, the, the bridge glory out of... Um, uh, Journey to the Dark Heart is supposed to be in there. If any of you want to write up how that happens, M. <laughs> Gordon, uh, it'll probably be worth an extra possibility or some extra experience points um, if anyone wants to write it up. Okay? And then I'll probably make an amalgamation of all of those and and uh, and, and have it uh, perfected. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, uh I know Ginger and Connor, uh, your characters will have all of the glories, okay? The, the last one that I've got on these, though, is the Heart of Ukon, and I don't have... Well, that's disappointing. I knew I should have written it down. Matter of fact, hang on a second. Let me go get a notepad so that I can write this down for something to do this coming week. Not that I don't have enough, but... There's always more. Okay. All right. Oof. Okay. Okay. Okay, is anybody going to volunteer to write that, or am I going to go ahead and write it? Okay. <laughs> I could I could put something together, but it's not going to be very detailed. Well, um, I don't think it really needs to be all that detailed. Uh, it uh, like the heart of Ukon. You can read that one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it, it it just it's not very detailed. It just says, "Hey, there was a glory here." Okay. Yeah, now I'll, I'll write something. Up. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Um, all right. And uh, for the rest of you, the, you know, the along the left-hand side, like I said, you've got a table of contents, and you can go in to those individual tables of contents. Uh, now, the the problem is if you go to edit something, which is the 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 little box with the pencil in it in the upper right-hand corner, if you go to edit something, you're going to have to f you can't then click on the on the left-hand side uh, to go there. You have to scroll down to wherever it is. 
and then write what you're going to write and and then be done with that um, these are supposed to be your individual journals okay so that you can keep track of what you've got going on uh, the character sheet notes are for what everyone can see and then the the journals that I've set up for you all um, are supposed to be for what only you see and you can of course you know copy and paste whatever wherever so that uh, so that you can make it uh, proper all right now that takes care of ginger and she's absolutely right we had uh, there was the the glory for the bridge um, and so you guys are allowed to have five uh, destiny cards each what do you mean all blanky you don't have anything in there uh, when I go to where you said the Watson, uh, after I click on journal, okay, so it comes up and there is nothing in there but uh, the character's name. I see everything. Yeah, click click on the character's name. That's a link. Yeah, yeah. In the notes tab, you've got to Mine click on the character. What's that? Mine does not go anywhere after. Going to background and notes, starting from there, and clicking on the Storm Night Journal, and my name in the Storm Night Journal, it opens up a new window. At that window, I see nothing other than my character's name. Configure. And there are no further links to take me further. None. And I then... click on just about everything here, and nothing seems to go somewhere else, I guess, for lack of a better way to put it. Aha, uh -huh. I see what's going on. Okay, I just changed you to owner in there. You may have to close the window and reopen it from the notes tab. Okay, I closed out the character sheet completely going back in. Okay. I did not have your permissions set up properly and I apologize about that. Oh, well, no worries. It just wasn't nothing there. <laughs> There's still nothing there? No, it's there now. Oh. Okay, does anybody else, uh, let's see, this would apply to Remington or Gordon as well. Uh, are, do you have your stuff in the journal? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, rock on. Uh, okay. It well, assumes you've got one. Yeah, uh, yeah, that assumes you've got one. Um, and let's see, Chris, you've got no, one. No, I said it. it I assume, I guess you just forgot one. Yeah, I just forgot to take care of Katsumi. So, all right, no problem, but that's taken care of now. Uh, anyway, you, you, all of you can read through and kind of set up some things for your own character. I will go through these from time to time and kind of read them myself. Um, I, I'm always looking for opportunities to set up adventures that are kind of personal uh, uh, the, the problem is that the adventures are really generally well filled out to begin with. So getting personal items in there can, can be a real struggle. I'm not a wuss. I can handle it. Um, I just need to, you know, I just need to have something to work with. So if you want to put stuff in there for me to work with, get it in there and, and it's good to go. Um, oh, Toma, um, I went yes. and I went and darkened up your your token a little bit, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you can see them any better because <laughs> all the browns and the and the darker greens kind of make him camouflaged. So we might have to find a a different token because if I darken him up anymore, he's the entire thing's just going to turn black. So, and I'm sure you don't want that. All right, now. Getting back to where we were, Ginger, one last time, did you have anything else to add? Ow. Uh, no, uh, other than we've got to uh, keep running and, and get to the new destination first. True. That's a very good point. Okay, Chris, what about you? Anything to add? Uh, not particularly. Uh... Let's see. To begin with, uh, we you know got the map, you know the Destiny map fragments. I guess I mean the tiles from that encampment in the Living Land. 
Mm -hmm. uh, where the Nile Empire was busy as excavating. We found that location after we infiltrated the uh, Sakura Company's uh, you know, research building. Mm -hmm. uh, which we burned down in the... Well, not <laughs> we, but it burned down once they knew we broke in. Oh no, uh, it was imploded. <laughs> imploded. It, there was fire... Might have or might not have been from a certain person, but we'll not talk about that. Uh, uh, you gave new uh, meaning to the phrase, kill it with fire. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, when we reached the encampment, it was swarming with the, you know, Nile, you know, Empire guards and the living land transform ease who were being slaved away digging through the dirt and muck and whatnot to find the tiles. We arrived right as they found the last of them. So me and Artorius went from kind of from my mind went from the left bottom, you know, going up through the camp while Rios and in Peaches came from the you know right top you know of the camp. Uh, me and uh, Aturius stole the <clears throat> stole the uh, the tiles, and, and on the way out, when the samurai attack from the Sakura company, uh, we, you know, he Aturius died, and tried to take him out in the last you know ditch effort of you know. You gave him the opportunity to, after he took three wounds, and then I either gloried or we didn't have a glory card ready, or you know, it was like nearly got you know got there, but I rolled really high on telekinesis and just turned that samurai who did the final blow into a gory metal ball. Yes. Mm. <laughs> well, let's just say it was a very powerful defeat of that yeah. samurai. I, a very yeah. powerful defeat? Oh. <laughs> uh, anything else, Chris? Uh, what about uh, uh, Dark Heart? The Dark Heart. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we arrived in India traveled to oh the village i can't remember the ma uh, name uh, name of and met the person is person not met a gentleman there who gave us the directions to the temple and how to safely train you know traverse to the temple and met up with our guide when we you know when we saw the temple in sight after traveling for a few days or just one it, it was like three days three or four days three days yeah three yeah. days uh when the temple was in sight we lost track of our guide and then we soon realized we were now dealing with the were tiger who is also our guide who did not recognize us in the beastal fury well we uh pacified him without killing him uh and when the moon got covered up, he returned to his human form, and we went our separate ways. We reached the bridge of the temple, you know, rickety bridge. So I immediately thought, let's just use telekinesis to just glide people over because it was 25 meters. Mm -hmm. uh, so, af no, after that, the, you know, the, there was the glory of Darius, who was one of two or three people who decided to take the bridge. After we went across the bridge, we disabled the you know, bridge by untying it and bringing it over to our side. Uh, we you know, reached the temple door where we were chased by some spiritual warriors who ultimately did nothing to us, just freak us out. Uh, and left us with the wooden dowel rod, large wooden dowel rod, to, to turn the door. We mm -hmm. tried to turn the door, broke a gear, fixed the gear, 
cleared debris out of the door so it could actually turn this time. And when we opened the door, the Nile Empire came to, you know, you know, parachute, you know, shoot it in. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, forgot to mention that the there was that uh, biplane, you know, flying by that uh, Katsumi one-shotted. Uh, <laughs> that uh-huh. was cool. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we entered the temple, closed the door behind us before they could get in. Once inside the temple, I heard rustling. I then go went out through the looked through the murder hole, shot a gout of flame, the to scorch the shock trooper who was on the other side. You know, didn't do much damage, but made them probably cautious. We continued deeper into the temple, had to avoid a some pitfalls enter the you know final room where it glowed a light blue and so did the tablets upon arranging them to accordance to the riddle that we because we had the book at hand we then uh you know saw the riddle got our new location where we need to go and right as we were about to leave and destroying the uh, you know, tablets. So, you know, when the Empire did get inside, they wouldn't be able to read it after taking a few pictures. So we could reference it later without having to rely on our memory. And then with some difficult find tests, we managed to find the secret way out where we met up with chess. Yeah. And then we did, you know, ran out the you know, back entrance. Okay. And then reach the second uh, valley, 30 meters this time to make it so <laughs> we had to take the bridge. And then I just used uh, my telekinesis better to go 50 meters. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and that's kind of where we left off. We had all been across to the other side. Okay. All right. Um, Artorius. I mean, honestly, I don't know how much I could actually add to that uh, explanation. It was very, very thorough. So, uh, very thorough. What about? I guess Dan- just from just remember that Artorius died a noble death, and everybody got really depressed. Yeah, uh, still yeah. depressed. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> so am I. Okay. Yeah, we did. We did not want that to happen. <laughs> no, but it happened. I didn't want it to happen. Okay, but I'm the GM. I didn't want to kill your character. That was a cool character. Um, it added to the drama, though. In that it case, totally did. in that case, Toma, what do you remember about Journey? Except that it's a great band. Uh, Journey to the Dark Heart. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> On again already been explained very thoroughly there's not really much that i can anything from really add to the situation anything from your viewpoint that was particularly special to you then well i will say i got very jealous that i didn't get to shoot the plane down and watch it explode <laughs> <laughs> that also our tour guide uh threw themselves off a cliff and still might be alive somewhere out there we just don't know just don't know. Even though, Might even be tracking you right now. Uh, sound. <laughs> they certainly could, actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't get my stick back. That's right. You <laughs> did not get that big old oak stick back. <laughs> oh, that would have. Prices must be made. That might have been handy against the predator you're coming up against. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, okay, Darius. Yes, what, sir. what about Journey to the Dark Heart? Uh, it, it's pretty well been covered, but do you remember anything in particular uh, that was impressed upon you uh, concerning Darius? Apart from that magnificent bridge maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. I mean, I've got some names in my notes, like the... Uh... The guy in the village, his name was Andrura, and our tour guide, tour guide, our guide was uh, Tajardi. Um, 
but in terms of things actually happening, no, we've, we've pretty much covered everything. Okay. All right. Uh, well, then, in that case, I'm going to move on to Katsumi. Anything special jump out at you? Justin? He's the silent but deadly type. No playing with a single shot. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really good shot, man. That was great. Um, okay. Then, in that case, we're going to kind of move on a little bit. Uh, let me preload this. Preload scene. And I want to show you what the scene was supposed to look like all done. Okay, I had to go back and, and do some, some work on this because I had all of this stuff prepared and just didn't make it happen. Uh, the first thing that you'll probably notice, uh, since all of you are now here, is, in fact, I'm going to get a screenshot of this, alt, print screen, uh, and I'll, I'll put it in somewhere in a minute. Um, but anyway, you'll notice that all of the, the, the poem is defined. Okay, uh, it was supposed to show up this way to your characters individually uh, uh, in your own languages. Okay, uh, oh. for instance, Katsumi is Japanese, so she would probably see it in kanji. Um, uh, uh, the rest of you are pretty much English, right? So, you know, oh, Russian, don't forget yeah, Russian. Right. Um, so, I mean, Toma would probably see what you're reading here in Russian. Of course, I've got it in English because mm -hmm. we are not natural speakers of those languages. So if any of you want to get like a telephone shot of this, because the poem is likely to come in handy later, uh, as well as the map and everything like that, please go ahead. Um, or even a screenshot. In fact, I'll, I'll take care of the screenshot here in just a minute. The second thing that I want you to notice is the the men who join hands in the four corners. Look at where nearby where the uh, X crosses, where it meets. That is Tezpura Psalm, where you had to find Andura. Oh, and Gordon, thank you for the name. I had forgotten it already. Um, the third thing that I kind of want you to notice is the land masses are a little bit different. Do any of you have a proposal for why those land masses might be different? Uh, uh, continental drift from thousands of years? Ding, ding, ding. And erosion and growth and, and stuff like that. I had completely forgotten about that until about 15 minutes before we started the game tonight. Um <laughs> Let's see, the next thing to notice, the last thing to notice, is you see the chalice glowing in the bottom middle. Um, it's... The, the way the original adventure images, which all of these are, the way the original adventure images went, it placed the chalice in the wrong part. Okay? Um, it's actually supposed to be further to the east. Uh, in the next bay, I, th I think it's the Bay of Taiwan, or something like that, and and that's where you're supposed to be going next. So the actual flashing image would would show up as as like part of the Bay of Taiwan. Okay. Uh, any questions before I go back off of this? Oh, good. Okay. Okay, then let me at least copy this. Okay, um, Control V, there we go. And I'm going to put it on the desktop file. Export as to the desktop. Uh, yeah. Destiny map tiles. I don't know why I didn't get this earlier. Final, but it's going to go into our... Uh, um, slideshow for the next five adventures export okay and we're done there discard changes and close okay so if there's no other questions about that I just wanted to make sure that all of you uh, had that opportunity to kind of look at that 
Um, I'll leave us here for the time being. Uh, it is now time to close out this adventure. So we're going to go a little bit at a time and show players. Yes, show players. All right, all of you should be able to see the advancement screen. Uh, Justin, I know that we were having a problem with that earlier. Are you still having problems with that? Justin? I was on mute. Yeah, and so no. You don't see it? No, I don't. No, I don't. I, the advancement window came up for me. Yeah, oh, okay. That's what I mean. Yeah, the, the advancement window came up. So on the left-hand side in the table of contents, go ahead and click on ending a scene, and that will take you directly to that. And you guys can kind of read, read down through that. Uh, so any pool cards you have, go back into your hands. Uh, do any of you even have pool cards? Uh, no. Okay. I got no cards. You got no cards. Well, that's fine. That's fine because we're getting rid of them anyway. Um, let's see, we're ending a scene, so we're actually going to be discarding all of those cards. So that's it for, for ending a scene, is just basically getting rid of those. Um, ending an act is a little bit more involved because you've got uh, health cards and possibilities and experience to look through. Uh, so health, uh, you guys are going to have time to to heal over the next few days um, so go ahead and mark off any wounds and shock that you have remember on your character sheet it's the left hand circle of each of those for wounds and shock it's not the right hand the right hand is your maximum is anybody uh, still caught up with that Okay, uh, all of your cards have already discarded. Uh, step four, once the GM uh, begins the new act and allows players to do so, they may draw four Destiny cards and one Cosm card, the number of which may be modified due to in-game circumstances, which it will be, because each of you will, for this first act, be allowed to have five instead of four. Uh, let's see. You are going to be in a core earth dominant zone when, when this starts. Um, oh, okay. No, it's just core earth dominant. So when, when we first start the game, once you guys do need cards, you'll be drawing um, from the core earth stack. Let me make sure that I've got that chosen properly. Uh, deck, Cosm. Okay, yeah, the proper deck is there. So you're good to go on that. Uh, possibilities and experience. Um, this was a one act. So you're going to have uh, five experience points, which I've already put into your sheets, for completing uh, the act. And then you're going to have another five that were put in there for completing the adventure, which I'll get to in just a minute. Um, do any of you want to convert any of your possibilities up to three maximum into experience points. Oh, that's at the end of the adventure. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, it's something to think about um, if you need it uh, while you're improving your character. Let's see. Uh, if your character has more than three possibilities, they stay where they're at. Uh, it looks like Gordon and Remington are the only ones at two. Uh, I welcome you to increase those to three. Uh, see possibility and experience. Five XP for completing the act. Okay. All right. Any questions so far? Nope. All right. Uh, any, anyone else? I'm good. Okay, since since you two spoke up, I'm going, and nobody else did, I'm going to assume everything is good. Um, so each of you should have at least 10 usable experience points, at least 10 in your, in your available XP on your character sheet. Ending an adventure, 
Once an end to the adventure is called, and I'm calling it now, cards may no longer be exchanged for possibilities. They are simply discarded. Well, now, wait a minute. That doesn't work. That doesn't work, Paul. Why did you write it that way? Because step three is down low. So I'm not calling it into the adventure yet. Uh, once step three is done, we're done uh, with the adventure. So once an end to the adventure is called, cards may no longer be exchanged for possibilities. They are simply discarded. Each knight gains uh, five experience points for completing the adventure. Again, I've already modified those. Each player determines whether to advance their Storm Knight or bank the experience points for later use. See advancement above for spending your XP to improve your characters. Uh, you may now exchange up to three extra possibilities. So let's see. Connor, you could exchange two. Ginger, you could exchange two. And Justin, you could exchange two. Um, for, uh, you know, one is worth three experience points. No, I don't think I want to do that either. Okay. Uh, which reminds me, I really need to have a notepad out. Because <laughs> I've got to mark down any improvements y'all do. No one else wants to exchange either? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Oh. Then you know what? Let's call the adventure... And we'll see about getting into the next one. Uh, do you all want to do any improvements with your characters? That's what I forgot to put up here. Yes. Um, Does it cost to uh, change a, an attribute like charisma, dex, mind, spirit? Double, double what you're trying to go for. Yep, double the new level. Oh, why did I close that? Okay. Uh, Gordon, what so did you from need? 10 to 11 would be 22. I've already spent all my XP. I've already updated the journal. Okay. Um, so the only... I've changed the character sheet itself, but the only skill I can't change is athletics. Sure you can. Uh, let me uh, let me get back to that. Uh, Storm Knights, and all of you are welcome to follow along on this because athletics uh, can indeed be a problem. So please go to... I believe it's your perks tab. Yes, go to your perks tab. And scroll all the way to the bottom. Ah, there it is. Okay. And then you just edit it. I see. Okay. And and that's for anyone. And, and of course, if any of you need help, that's no problem. Um, to figure out advancement in, in the left-hand uh, table of contents for the advancement, go ahead and click on advancement. And that will help you out. Now, there are some changes that have been made to skills because some of them are easier, some of them are more difficult. Um, but these are changes that are being looked at for version 1.5 anyway. Okay, I don't know if they'll actually make it in. They may not, but they, they are there. So, after completing an act, each member of the group typically earns 5 experience points or XP. These can be saved or spent any time during the play of the game to increase attributes and skills or purchase new perks as shown below. Everyone in the player character team always has the same XP as everyone else, and I don't like that rule. I hate that rule. So the house rule is, it is possible to purchase more XP at the end of an adventure to make further improvements. See below. Um, I like to... I. I kind of like to give the five experience points at the end of each act. Um, but I, since they're getting ready to make changes in Torg 1.5 so that uh, Storm Knight groups, uh, player groups, can choose their own way of, of uh, dealing with experience points and possibilities, uh, I've been thinking through a couple of different things that, could, uh, that we could do that will not seriously disrupt the game. OK, because I really don't want to disrupt the game. And I have this very bad habit of going after the shiny thing and saying, "Ooh, let's try out this rule and let's try this rule out. And usually uh, I would say seven out of ten times, whatever I, I have tried to introduce goes foul or gets ignored. So I really don't want to make that many changes. So attributes uh, cost double what the next level is. So if you're going from six to seven, it's going to cost you 14 experience points. Um, perks are based on the number of perks that you already have, um, uh, and each level, the, the first two perks are basically free, and then uh, each new perk that you get goes by your maximum perk cost plus two, okay? 
So your uh, your third perk on your character sheet, which is the first after generating your character, the char the the uh, character purchases costs five experience points. The fourth perk would cost seven. The fifth costs nine, and so on. Okay. So if you say you've got six of them, it's you know it's going to cost you a lot. It, it'll cost you eleven experience points to get that. Uh, and then skills, of course, skills are kind of the new change. Okay, you've got a listing of normal skills, difficult, hard, and specialized skills, and how to uh, uh, and how to improve skills that you already own. Uh, it's not terribly difficult. It just looks that way. So, um, okay, so let me write this down. So Darius is already improved, and you've already listed it. Yes, I updated my journal. Okay, improved journal. Updated. So the only thing I need you to do is to change unspent to zero. Okay, I can do that. Uh... HP two zero. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing. No, really. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Zero. Okay. So that's Darius. Um, who's next? Oh, so wait. The advancement for skills is what again? Okay, the if you're just advancing skills that you already own, the cost is equal to the next add that you're purchasing uh, in experience points. So if you're going from four to five, it's going to cost you five uh, five XP XP. Um, if you okay. you know it, even if you've got uh, the um, the mastery perk um, where you can get up to three more. Uh, up to a total of eight ads, uh, it's still the same cost for those skills. Okay. And remember, if you're going from, like from two to four, you have to pay three, and you have to pay four. Correct. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to spend nine on five, so that's going to take it from three to five. Okay, on what? And then I'm going to go... <laughs> On find. Find. Find test. Oh, yes. okay. So I'm going to go up to five on that. From three, you said? Yep, from three. So that's be a nine spent. Okay. And then I'm going to up my kinesis by one, which is going to be from seven to eight. So eight more. That's 15, right? That's 17. Yeah, 17. Oh, 17, yes. Yep. Okay, is is that everything for you? Uh, yes. Okay, so that's actually going to leave you with five. All right. Okay. Uh, available XP. Five. Okay. Um, and who's next? Darius? No, D Darius is done. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. He's ready to go. Uh, I could use the math check on my skill increases. Just make sure I got those right. Okay. Let me, uh, let me just write them down. What are you doing? So I increased my lock picking from one to two. Okay. I increased my medicine from one to... Th I'm sorry, sir? No, you're good. Medicine? So my medicine, I increased to three, so I used I spent two of my XPs and I spent another three. Uh, now, okay, so that's two to three. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I increased it to two, and then I well, yeah, uh, the stealth I increased it to two, and then tracking I increased it to two. So I think I should have about two XP left. Stealth. If I did my math right. One to two, one to two. Well, by following along, it sounded like you spent eleven. And that's what I'm trying to check on to make sure my math is right on that. Six, seven, eight, nine. No, it's it's only nine. No, because he said he went from one to three on medicine. 
in medicine, so I'm oh yeah. one to three on medicine, so that's five. I yes, five. yes, yeah, that's five total. Yeah, I uh, you you kind of broke up, so I was guessing. No, you're fine. Okay. Yeah, you're fine. So yeah, yeah, that that sounds correct. So all right, well I'm good. See. Toma, so that'll leave you with three. Fine with that. Okay. Uh, available XP three. Okay. Got that. All right. So that only leaves uh, uh, Justin and Ginger. And of course, we'll get uh, Catherine next week. Yeah, and I'm trying to decide if I want to bank it and raise an attribute or if I want to uh, spend it now. Let's see. So that's 11. Which attribute were you looking at? Uh, charisma from an eight to a nine. Okay, so that would be that would cost you eighteen. Well, this next adventure is set to give you all about twenty-five. Wait, <laughs> I heard wait. So, and of of course, you know, uh, eleven. 16 so it would take you two acts to be able to to save that up do you want to bank it or do you want to spend it i think i'll bank it for now okay so, also if there's a, it it might mean that, that that way i can maybe pick up a skill if i have to a new skill on the way if, if it comes up that's true that's very true If the situation warrants it. Yep. So, Katsumi. What do you think? Do you need some help with this, or are you squared away? I'm squared away. I'm not making any changes. No changes. Okay. Um, so, that means you're sticking with 12. Banking 12. I like that term, banking. Um, call me weird, but it, it's a good term. Okay. Weird. Thank you. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> All right. Only doing a service to him. <laughs> uh, okay. So that's squared away. All right. What's the next part then? Uh, let's see. Prologue. We're going to get into some fun here. So let me... Preload scene and activate, and then I'm going to edit this one. Oh, configure, showing navigation. Nope. So save changes. There we go. And I don't remember what map I'm supposed to have next. I'll I'll probably have to fumble through that a little bit. Okay. Uh, any questions before we carry on? That didn't really take all that much time. Yeah, just for could... uh, just so I can keep it straight in my notes, what is the name of the next adventure? Um, okay, it's Relics of Power Two, Relics of Power okay. Part Two, I should say, the Possibility Chalice. And yes, before any of you think you know the adventure, <laughs> <clears throat> and of course the maps are going to make it different too. So, all right, man, at 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 fifty two minutes. And we're ready to go. I figured it'd take an hour and a half or so. Uh, you guys are awesome. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. No? Okay. Okay. All right. Let me get it open. Uh, oh, I need the Adventure Archive, please. Thank you. Okay. Some things to read. And I was reading them to myself earlier, and I flubbed them badly. So hopefully that reading was was good enough to uh, to to help me out here. All right, adventure prologue. India, eleven ninety nine. Were there angels singing somewhere? The knight stumbled, half blind, through the unfamiliar greenery out into the clearing to stand before the massive stone gate. Three, uh, there was only silence, for the angels stopped singing and the animals had fled. The temple guards were nowhere to be seen. He had only a few minutes before they came back, though, he was sure. With increasing vigor, 
He stumbled to the dark entryway, his heart pounding a charge in his breast. The ragged male armor he wore clanked against the old stone. Heedless, he plunged into the darkness. Here his near blindness served well, and he moved, uh, served him well, and he moved without mishap uh, through the narrow winding corridors down, ever down. Now, it was near blindness, not complete blindness. Um, the angels resumed their singing, guiding his steps, filling his mind with sound. This place was similar to, yet larger than, the first temple, the one that had shown him the way. He remembered the first temple well, the simple chambers, the blue fire of the map in the dais, uh, and the fiery outline of the grail pulsing its holy beacon to him. There was heathen writing there as well, but he could not read it. He did not need to. The pictograph of the grail was clear to see, and the contours of the country had been burned into his mind during his travels after the crusade. He knew to within a hundred kilometers where the grail must be. And now, years later, he was sure he had found it. The singing was louder now, and a fearful buzzing joined the harmony. There were bodies around him, and the buzzing was the flies that fed on the stinking, rotting corpses of the seekers who had come before him. Could this truly be the resting place of the grail? Aye, a test it is, he thought. He pressed on. A glowing blue aura beckoned to him from the bottom of the stairs. God be praised. Thailand, 1766. And it starts out kind of familiar. Was that singing? He smiled, knowing he was imagining things in his excitement. And yet the clues, the hints, the fascination and taboos that surrounded this area. Surely there was something big, something valuable here. Morty caressed the revolver and crept quietly on. The clearing appeared suddenly, Morty moving through uh, from darkest green to blinding light. He heard a shout and knew he had been seen. The dazzle cleared from his eyes as he brought his pistol up. He saw a shadowy figure moving toward him. Was it the glare or was the head truly that of a monster, large and with waves of heat distorting it? With a yell of fear, Morty fired five times. The figure fell. The jungle was completely still. He turned again.